Hello there, my name is Yusmaps and welcome to another exciting Blend Life tutorial. And uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, how to simulate a collapsing pedestrian walk path uh, in Blend Life 2.8 using the physics simulation system. Uh, so if you want to watch the entire time lapse, how I set up everything, uh, including the materials and uh, this model here, uh, you can just go watch my time lapse video on uh, my second channel, Blender Money. It's this video that I'm uploading right now. I'll be leaving a link in the description. Uh, but uh, for now, we're just going to look at simulating uh, the collapsing ground. So let's go into our new project, uh, delete the default cube, add a plane. Uh, we're going to create uh, the brick pattern, uh, this pattern here. And for that, I don't want to place individual blocks, blocks uh, like this uh, because it would take a lot of time to do. So I'm what I'm going to do is just use a plane, then cut in some loops like this and uh, other loops are like that. And now I can select this, uh, this pattern of edges, dissolve, that, dissolve them using Ctrl X, and uh, dissolve these, uh, actually dissolve these ones here, and you can see we have that brick pattern. And then you can hit I twice to insert our uh, individual uh, faces, and now if we change to face mode and uh, invert our selection, we can select uh, those inner uh, parts and delete them. Uh, so we retain uh, the brick pattern. And then we can add a, solid, a solidify modifier and to give it some depth. Let me turn on uh, cavity and random colors uh, so that we can see the shapes more clearly. And uh, also uh, we can uh, add a bevel uh, to this. Let me apply scale and rotation something like that. I can add also add in normals and uh, under the object properties, <coughs> under normals, you can turn on smooth, auto smooth, uh, to kind of soften uh, the edges. Uh, this is going to be our brick pattern. Uh, the gaps are a bit too uh, large, but uh, you can reduce yours uh, by determining the size you want, the gap you want uh, using uh, the inset tool. So now that we have the pattern, uh, we, have, we can repeat it are using the array modifier. Uh, if you see, we have a very large gap here. Uh, so we can increase the relative offset just a bit so that we have a uniform, we have uniform distance between uh, these gaps, something like that. And I uh, also wanted to repeat on the, on this axis, on the Y axis. So I'll just copy this and uh, have this repeated on that axis. Uh, the problem is our pattern kind of breaks up around uh, this repeat repetition. So what I'm going to do is just delete uh, this side. You can see, uh, let me see, uh, that fix it. So let's see if I delete this. Hmm, actually, it doesn't repeat, it doesn't break too much here. I think it's just the gap Uh, but uh, it breaks up our, our right around here. So what I'm going to do is uh, move the uh, the bevel below uh, the array and uh, under the array for this side. Uh, let's also make sure that uh, the, the count is set to two. Uh, let's turn on merge so that we merge any vertices uh, that are connecting to the array. Uh, the problem is uh, we are also closing the gap between the different so we are, we are merging this larger block into one like block. So what I'm going to do is just select uh, these edges and pull them back just a bit so that we retain uh, that gap uh, like that. Uh, but uh, this is our block. But uh, right now, if we added a uh, rigid body system and played back, it's being simulated as one single uh, platform. Uh, which is not what we're going for. We want to simulate uh, the entire, we want to in simulate individual bricks. So uh, another thing you, you, you want to do right now uh, is apply the solidify modifier and uh, unwrap uh, your bricks in case you want to texture them. Uh, it will be easier to unwrap them right now uh, than if you have individual 
bricks are virtually have to select one by one and unwrap individually. Uh, so now we can apply the array. I yeah, yeah, we can ap apply the array. You don't have to apply the bevel uh, because yeah, we want to our simulations to uh, to simulate faster, and uh, you can turn the bevel off and off, off and on when you want to simulate the uh, the yeah the when you want to run the simulation. So right now, this is still a block, and uh, it's just collapsing uh, as a single platform. So we can go to edit mode, select everything, hit P to se separate by those parts. Uh, this will separate all the individual elements. And uh, if we play back, uh, it's still just simulating as a single platform because it's uh, collapse. It doesn't have anywhere to collapse on. So I'm just going to add this ground. Let's see. Yeah, something like this. Also make sure that it's not intersecting with uh, the, any of the bricks and uh, go to the modifiers, go to the physics tab and uh, give it a rigid body passive. Now if we play back, you can see this is what we are running into and uh, the reason why these are just collapsing into themselves is that uh, they have all, all of the bricks we are having because they are created from a single object uh, they all have the same pivot point. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, just select, every, select all the bricks hit M to move them into their own collection blocks so that we can easily select them uh, if we want to. So to select all the bricks, I'll just hold down Shift G, uh, select by collection, and then uh, select the blocks collection. Uh, what I want to do is uh, uh, reset uh, the center of origin uh, to, the ori to, to geometry so that each block has its individual center of origin, uh, which will be the center of mass. So if I right click, set origin to geometry you can see I can reset the geometry like that now if I simulate they will all collapse and uh, they are now being simulated as in video bricks so since we have that uh, now let's start working on the collapsing of these bricks as maybe earthquake or whatever you want to use uh, run through uh, the pavement so uh, to, to simulate that, we're going to first deform uh, this mesh, uh, this ground, uh, so that as it's caving in, uh, the bricks also cave in. So we need some geometry here to work with. So I will add a few polygons like that. You can even subdivide this even further, but uh, for the case of this tutorial, I'll just keep it to a very low resolution so that uh, the simulation runs a bit faster. Uh, so then after that, we can go to the physics tab and uh, turn on dynamic painting uh, because we're going to use dynamic painting to draw uh, where the uh, the earthquake or whatever you want to use is go is running through so let's use select this and give it a canvas setting add it as a canvas and uh, uh, we want to change from surface paint uh, because we're not going to use paint we're going to use uh, displacement and uh, then that's all the settings you need for I think here and then we need to create a brush. Uh, let me use, you can use whatever you want. I'm just going to use this monkey head. Uh, let me smoothen this. And uh, for it, I will just also turn, it, turn dynamic painting on. And uh, instead of it being a canvas, let's use it as a brush. And yeah, any setting you use here, I think can work. Uh, I use mesh velocity, mesh volume and proximity, but I think it did nearly the same as any other setting except a particle setting pass particle system because you need a particle system for that uh, so let's get this now we just need to animate it running through uh, the surface so I'm just going to use only 150 frames so I can run it through here up to there and then you just start moving it around like that you can see how wherever it touches it leaves uh, a mark like that I can also just scale it up maybe push it down a bit okay maybe that is too much so let's let me turn on smooth shading for this and uh, let's select this I want it to start in the middle here I don't want it to go far off uh, the 
corners there. Let's see. Okay, so this is what we're going to be simulating. Uh, let me reduce my time frame, frame to 150. And uh, so if we unhide this, playback, nothing is really happening uh, because for some reason dynamic painting doesn't affect uh, the, the rigid body surface of this object. So even when you change this uh, to mesh and turn on deformation, deforming, uh, the bricks won't fall into uh, those divots are created by this. Here, uh, I don't know, maybe because uh, the dynamic paint is uh, above, so the similar is above the rigid body system, uh, and uh, the rigid body system is not considering it anymore, uh, in the same way how other modifiers work. So, uh, so the workaround for that I found is what is was. Uh, let me first clear this. The workaround for that was uh, what I did is I duplicated uh, this ground, and the one was was to be the deformer that will have uh, it won't have the rigid it won't have the dynamic paint, but uh, it will have the rigid body system, and uh, it will be uh, the actual body that deforms, and uh, the other one, the other one would be actually the deformer would have the dynamic paint and uh, and the other one would be the rigid body uh, that will create uh, the collision or the ground for these to fall into so it does so one should have dynamic paint uh, without rigid body and another one should have rigid body without dynamic painting. So this, since it's going to be the rigid body, it shouldn't be the deformer, it should be uh, the ground. And uh, let me first hide it for a second. And this is going to be the deformer. And it won't be rendered. And uh, just to make to make it easy to see, I'm just going to go to the physics tab, to the display tab and turn on uh, display as wireframe. And let me hide and hide everything. I can even place this under that. So so now so let's get the ground here. So the reason why I worked it, I did it like this is because when you make this a rigid body. You can add modifiers like, say, the bend modifier. Uh, where is that? Let's bend, 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 bend. Surface deform. I think it's called uh, simple deform. Let me first turn off the influence. If I animate this. sure why this is not changing okay I think you should start animating you, you, you can see if you add a modifier and bend this without uh, the dynamic painting it will affect uh, the rigid body here as long as you have this deformation checkbox marked uh, if you don't have that it won't affect it but I uh, need to have that checked So instead of using uh, the simple deform modifier to bend this, I'm just going to use the deformation uh, created by uh, the dynamic paint. And I need to make sure that that is turned on. Uh, should, 
it's not so let me turn that on make sure this is a set as a canvas and add as a canvas uh, this should be set to displacement so instead of using uh, the surface deform uh, to deform this uh, we're going to use another modifier called actually instead of using simple deform we're going to use another modifier called surface deform and uh, we're going to target this object here uh, that is deforming using the dynamic paint to deform uh, this object so and uh, the way it works is that uh, it just uses you need to first turn off uh, the dynamic painting so that is the same shape as as the ground and then after you have selected it hit bind and uh, it takes a few seconds to work I don't know. so you can see bind yeah so now any changes or any deformation that are added to this I will be translated to this object uh, so let's turn this back on and you can see it's already deforming our object and uh, you can see how these are starting to fall in like so let's go to the physics tab here and see okay everything is set Yeah, basically we have we have set up everything uh, we just need to run the simulation let's see let me first clear the catchy for this because uh, we are running into some issues here let me first turn off clear these keyframes Want to reset uh, the simulation so that we don't have that those artifacts going on. I'm also not sure not sure why some of these are not collapsing in. Let me see animated animated deform. Okay, I may want to in increase uh, the solver here, the solver iterations here, to increase the fidelity of the simulation, and uh, maybe that will remove that snad. Let's see if I. No, that's how you make it. I'm not sure why these are not collapsing as well, uh, but uh, yeah, sometimes these things actually now they are collapsing. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's a bug. But uh, that's how you set up. That's how you, you set up everything. Uh, now we we can when you see this happening, things collapsing before uh, the simulation starts working. Uh, that's a bug. You just need to find a way to reset the the simulation by either moving any of the rigid body so that this here, this line here clears uh, because that indicates how far the simulations the simulation has baked and uh, we just need to reset it and you can see yeah so that's how you set up everything and again you can watch uh, this time lapse that I'm uploading on my second channel uh, to get that to see how I set up everything to work uh, in this simulation you can see I also used uh, the Suzanne monkey to kind of help us yeah thank you for watching I'll see you in the next video